Hey, it's Chris with LG Squared here again at the High Performance Home in Marietta, Georgia, where we just finished installing all of the wall insulation uh, and we're starting all of the, the cladding, uh, which is a fiber cement lap siding and a panel siding. And uh, we have one feature wall that's gonna uh, be all Trespa, which is a composite siding as well. And it'll be the vertically oriented open joint cladding system and the insulation is four inches of continuous rock wool on the exterior of the wall and seven inches on the roof when you do an exterior cladding system you have different details at your windows when you install the windows at the sheathing layer of the assembly which we have done this is called an any window you can do an Audi window, which is which will uh, uh, result in it looking more traditional, where the window is more at the same level as the as the siding. Uh, we like to put these windows back. It provides additional protection, shading. Uh, it also gives it a more of a reveal at each window. It's kind of gives it some depth architecturally. We finished installing all of our uh, wall insulation uh, on on the home and you can see behind all of those furring strips, that's what we're gonna attach this cladding system to. And those align with all the studs in the wall. And this wall is a, uh, it's a sheer wall, so we have 12 inch on center framing. So all of these, each one of these one by fours is installed at, one, at 12 inches on center. And on the east and west walls of the home, we're using 16 inch on center framing. So then they, we have 16 inch on center one by fours. And so when you get to the corner, corners of a house that has uh, exterior insulation, what happens is when you reach that corner, there's four inches of where you cannot attach anything to, like you know your, your vertical furring strips. When they get to the corner, there's nothing to attach to right at the corner of that insulation. That's why we have all these horizontal uh, pieces at the corner, and then we put a little piece a little short piece there in between those horizontals and that's what we attach to and those those horizontals are attached to excuse me the verticals are attached to the horizontals because the horizontals are then tied back to the structure and in each horizontal we have two screws so we have a secure attachment there and so then at the corner whether you're doing traditional trim like one by four or one by six or you're doing what we're doing which is this metal reveal system you still need a corner, you still need something to attach to, and with a one by four and four inches of insulation, there's nothing back there. There's nothing to attach to, and there's no furring strip because we can't attach that to anything either. So with those horizontals, that gives us our attachment method. And you can see this has a little flange uh, here that that attaches to those vertical and the horizontal one by fours. But this is our co typical corner. Uh, reveal here. This is a, it's a an inverted corner, and it 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 is wider. This piece, this little leg here, is wider here when you're doing when you have lap siding, and then when you go to like a panel siding, it it gets it gets a little skinnier. Got a piece here that shows where you have where you might have sort of a lap meeting a panel at a corner. So this one's a little thinner, that's thicker. So this is where the lap would be, and this would be where the panels are. Where you have where you have a lap meeting lap at a corner, there's this one, and it's the same width in both directions. Okay. And then at the tops, where we have where where the termination is of the panels, there's an inverted J J channel. That's what that looks like. And so those those will th then we just cut the panels to go to butt right up against this edge here so we have no gap and then at the corners here uh, the we've cut a couple of these are a little bit short and that's and this is our mock-up wall that we're looking at here now so you can see we this gives us an opportunity to make these kind of cuts and then be able to go back and adjust and say no in the future we want them to look more like this and so by by pushing this right up against the edge like that that gives that minimizes that gap there 
we can allow moisture in this wall. Any kind of bulk water can get into this cavity behind this, behind this siding, whether it's through the gap at the edge or anywhere else, say around the window. Because we have it, because it is a rain screen, we have three quarter inch, a three quarter inch gap here where the furring strips are. Those are one by fours, so they're three quarter inch thick. And the lap siding, between the lap siding and the insulation, is three quarter inch. Now that channel is for moisture, but it's it's almost primarily for ventilation because moisture typically doesn't uh, get into here like bulk water. Because once you detail all this and install it correctly, you're going to shed all of that bulk water away before it has a chance to get in there but in the event that it does it has a place to go at the top and bottom of this uh, ventilation channel we've got this um, this is a core event it's a ventilation strip and at the top of it here we've got the little insect screen to prevent any insects from getting in and down at the bottom we have the same thing so the insect screen at the bottom some believe that uh, insects won't live inside the cavities because there's enough ventilation and air movement in there but this is a belts and suspenders it doesn't uh, the, the cost is the same the insect screen in there is uh, just why not have it and so we are all about doing belt and suspenders we've done that same corner reveal here at the corner of the of the window uh, we've got the double we've got the lap siding going into this edge and then we've just got a flat panel going back into the window now we do not need to caulk this edge, this or this corner right here, again, because if any moisture does get in here, it's going to go into this rain. It's going to go onto the uh, to our water resistive barrier, which is this here. This is our polywall system. This is a liquid applied water resistive barrier and air barrier, uh, and this wraps the entire house so if any water does get back here this is where the window is back at this plane so if any water does get back to here it'll just run down this surface and then out at the bottom water will have a tough time finding it back there finding its way back there because this is a good five inches back so water getting back here it'd be driving rain but it'll hit this and most more than likely it'll run down before it'll find its way back but if it does find its way back it has a place to go and that's that's the critical thing about assemblies is making sure that the water has a place to go to get out of the assembly I want to touch on how we're doing the the sill of this window because there are a couple it, you know a couple of things you have to deal with with continuous insulation you have you have of course the depth of the insulation and the furring and then the siding which is a total of about five and a half inches. That's from the sheathing layer. And then you also have, to, so with that depth, uh, you have to make sure that your sill slopes away from, away from the, the building, so to keep the water away from the window. When, as rain comes down this window, we wanna make sure it slopes away from the building instead of toward the building. It's fairly common to have a custom metal sill pan at the bottom of each window uh, like this when you have this continuous insulation. Uh, so what we've done is, this is what it looks like here. You can see it slopes away from the, away from the window. It has two vertical uh, flanges here that turn up, that turn up the window jamb. They'll cut the siding, obviously, to slope and match match what's going on here, and then, but so that's what it that's what it ends up looking like here, and then this just jams back into this into this reveal. But what's important is to have this vertical piece. We've we've made this about two inches. Uh, we need we will need to trim this back because our our metal reveal trim comes down, and it'll be cut and it'll flush out right to the right to this uh, to the to the sloped part of this flashing at the top we have our uh, just just a flat panel this is a flat trim uh, excuse me just the, the fiber cement trim it's just flat and then we just do the same detail on this side this has got you see the four inches of insulation here our furring strip over here that's what that finish finishes out as We've got this corner reveal and then the panel okay uh, up here we've got these horizontal pieces. This is our transition from lap to panel siding. See that there? 
the double F here, so the, this panel comes down and stops about 3 8 inch shy of this, this first level here, and then you've got this gap here, and then you've got another F, they call it an F, uh, channel there and that covers the top edge of, of the siding and so this is just a this is aesthetics here this will act this has a small slope to it so any water that gets in here will drain out any water that gets here to drain out and the reason we're not making contact here is to prevent uh, the damage at the bottom of the panel because if the water if this is making contact water can find its way back in there and stay there and just uh, eventually erode away at the panel. And then the vertical pieces we have, this is a two-piece two uh, reveal. It has a reveal that's behind the panels. Uh, it's got about a, a two-inch leg here and here, and then it has this little receiver piece in the middle that this piece just snaps into. And then this is that J-mold that I was showing you that caps the top, and so all of our panels will just butt right into that there and there, and so you don't see any of the edges. None of this needs to be caulked, sealed, ever. Makes it a very low maintenance trim detailing and siding assembly for the owner. And once it's all finished, we'll just paint it. We'll have it all painted, but there will be um, little to no, uh, in fact, zero caulk anywhere, even where we, have, where we butt the siding together. We don't caulk those. We don't caulk it at the trim. We don't caulk it at the windows. We don't do any caulk because caulk fails. That's kind of the bulk of all this trim detail. And you can see just from a distance here, see how that kind of all looks nice and slick. It's clean, very not as bulky as like 1x4 trim or 1x6 trim. And it's really providing a low maintenance, durable option for the homeowner. Well, that's it from the High Performance Home in Marietta, Georgia, talking about our cladding system and contemporary trim detailing. Feel free to leave a comment or send us a message, and we'll be happy to answer uh, when we can. So thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time. This is Chris from LG Squared.